Um, so since it is not something that I'm ever likely to do, tell me what the what it felt like at the beginning and then what it felt like at the end of the marathon. Oh, the beginning is just like such a buzz, partly just to be around so many people, but back at that kind of event was so good. And um, you just feel really nervous because you have no idea what's going to happen. You have no idea who you're, who you're going to see, who you're going to meet, what the weather's going to be like. It was Wales, but it rained basically the whole time. Um, yeah, it's, you were just a pile of nerves, really. You think, am I going to figure out how to run? And then actually <laughs> you start running and then you just, you just keep going. And um, yeah, so that's good. And then the end, oh my word, you're just like a pile of emotions. I mean, I didn't know what was rain, not sweat or tears, to be honest, by the time I got to the end. Welcome to our live stream. <laughs> so brilliantly graphic. Also, I loved how you just went, you start running and then just keep going. If I started running and kept going, about a mile later, I would have collapsed. Um, <laughs> welcome if you guys are joining us for this um, live conversation. Now, um, Jess and I were just talking about um, marathons um, and I just said she ran a marathon last week, um, which is a thing I will never do. And so I was asking her how it felt at the beginning and at the end. And she just said, you just start running and keep going. And I, I just think that's the best thing ever. That's the secret to run a marathon. Start running and keep going. Yeah, like um, Boris Gump, isn't it? When he just decides to run. I and mean, he just I, keeps going. I, I guess. Could, could you have kept going at the end? No, to be honest, at mile 18, I was like, no, I'm done now. I want to stop. <laughs> yeah, no, mile 18, I'd have been done too, yeah. Um. Anyway, amazing. What day was it that you did it on? Sunday. Oh, That's my Sunday. gosh. It's amazing that you're even, like, out of bed right now. I'm so impressed. Um. So welcome. We're not going to talk about marathons for the next hour. You haven't, if you haven't tuned into the wrong live conversation, <laughs> it's fine. This isn't an hour talking about marathons, but I did think it was exciting and I wanted to hear more from Jess. Um, what you're actually here to talk about, uh, to, to listen to us talk about um, is Accessible Church. So that is what the next hour is gonna look like. So welcome, welcome to this live conversation on New Wine Online. My name is Kate Wharton. I'm one of the assistant national leaders and uh, here is Jess and I'm gonna um, introduce her and then I'm gonna, um, ask her lots and lots of questions and she's going to talk to us about the amazing job that she does and the role that she has within New Wine. Um, as we go through this time, um, you're really welcome, uh, whatever your role is, whether this is something that you know all about or have worked with or have accessed yourself, or whether you're just interested to find out more, it's fantastic to have you joining us. Um, and if you have any questions as we're talking over the next hour, and if you just put them um, in the comments, um, we will be able to um, add those into our conversation as we go along. And we'd love it if you wanted to do that. So Jess, you are the head of ministry for Accessible Church. What on earth does any of that mean? <laughs> yeah, so um, my role is to kind of oversee accessibility um, at New Wine, and that is do with overseeing things at events like United and that is um, supporting and encouraging local churches too so um, although a lot of what I do kind of revolves around United um, yeah, it's also kind of being on the ground visiting churches answering emails just being a general encourager to the local church um, with whatever dominate denomination it is or you know whoever whoever I can help and support and encourage then yeah that's who I love to encourage really. <laughs> Fantastic. And so what, I, I, how would you sort of define the, the vision for, for that work? You've, you've talked about obviously helping, encouraging, visiting, but what, what sort of difference is it that you hope this ministry will make to, to United, to New Wine, but also just to the church in general? Yeah, so I just, um, oh, I'm sure as you do as well, Kate, believe that God like is, has a heart of everyone and wants everyone to be a part of his kingdom and that his invitation is to everybody. Um, and I suppose my specific role is to make sure that his, his the gospel is heard by um, people with additional needs and disabilities and make sure that they are included and welcomed in local church and at, at everything they go to, really, you know. And I mean, in one sense, uh, you know, we'd, we'd almost want to think that this didn't have to be a separate thing, wouldn't we? Because we'd almost want to think, well, this just happens, just happens everywhere, that everybody is able to be involved and included but actually that isn't always the case is it and so obviously this ministry um is is, is necessary um and so what do you think 
it often does sort of look like in churches? What is the experience that often does happen for people um, who have, well, obviously there's a million different types of additional need and or disability that people might have, but what kind of thing is, is often people's experience? Mm. Trying so to I think, to yeah, often um, perhaps church leaders don't really know where to start or they don't know what to do. People might go, um, and because they might look or seem a bit different, people maybe don't really engage with them or don't ask them how they can help. I think I'll probably say it several times over the course of the next hour, but I think the biggest way you can start is just by asking someone how, how you can help asking the people in your church, how they, you know, you can best support them and meet their needs. And um, yeah, I mean, I think there are things around language, there's things around like accessibility into a building, which might hinder people being able to um, engage and, and join in with what's going on. So yeah, I think um, it is it is something which I think in a perfect world we wouldn't necessarily have this ministry, but um, I think the fact that New Wine have it shows that they, they do care about this people group and they want to see them included in the family of God, and that's really important and exciting for me. So yeah, absolutely, and and so that leads on to sort of the next question really, which is you say so New Wine. This is a really big part of who we are as New Wine. We have this this thing called accessible church that's part of of who we are and part of our ministry um and so can you just say something about sort of where that came from what that looks like because it's not just something that's brand new this is you know it's been around for a while hasn't it so yeah what's the what's the story there what's the history yeah so um i mean kate you've been around longer than me i think you probably know more <laughs> because i've only joined the last kind of few years um since access started but yeah, I think it just came from from seeing a need and and people saying actually how can we support you how can we support you as a family just kind of starting probably it's just one family one group of parents and one young person and um yeah, just seeing the need and meeting that need and then through that that has grown into something which is you know like you said an integral part of what new wine does um yeah and yeah go on. yeah no absolutely I mean it, as as you just said Jess I I I'm not just here if you like well I am just here in my role as assistant national leader but actually I do have a history myself with um with our place and um and and the, actually the the idea of accessible church as a whole ministry is newer isn't it as it's grown uh, back when it started we had this thing called our place that I was involved in kind of right from the beginning actually um which was just joyous I absolutely um loved being part of that and um before I was ordained I was a speech and language therapist and and so um, getting involved in this ministry was kind of really part of that for me. And, I, and to be able to continue to do that through the first few years of, of my ordained life was a real joy for me because it felt like it connected different parts of my life. I and mean, I think you're right that that was the kind of story at the beginning. There was literally one, so Heather Holgate, the, the superstar who kind of set up um, the whole idea of, of our place, she was just supporting a family from her church. And she, so she went along with the idea to support one child being able to access the children's work and so that happened and then of course inevitably the following year there was more people looking for that support and, and so there was a little team that formed and I always love the fact that Heather then spoke to some of the parents and said you know what do you guys need thinking that they would say you know emotional spiritual support and of course they did need all of those things but the biggest answer to her question was a washing machine on site um, and so that was kind of right from the beginning there was like you always knew there was going to be a washing machine in our place because um yeah that was just a thing that made people's lives a lot easier when they had um when they had that that need and and so it and it just grew and grew and in the old days um when I was involved um mostly at Newark um it we just we, you know we, we just had kind of one venue called our place um and then and we worked with um, children and uh, young people and their families and then the work grew into working with adults as well and and then parents and carers and into all the different aspects now of the ministry that we know as accessible church which is just a joy um so if we think just for a moment because we've said that this is a, a ministry which kind of goes throughout the whole year um, but let's just think about united um what what does it look like kind of on the ground at united there's there's several venues there's all sorts of different things going on there's lots of team what tell us a little bit about all of that yeah, so I guess unless you've been to United and kind of maybe been on an accessible church team or you're a parent or a, a young person with additional needs, you might not even realise kind of what goes on. And yeah, so I'll do my best to explain that. Um, so we have um, 
kind of three main teams, which are uh, our place. So our place team look after um, any anyone under 18 who have additional needs on site. Um, and that involves, uh, they have an our place venue, but they also have within all of the kids and youth venues, uh, an inclusion space, just where people, young people can, can go and just have five minutes out, um, a bit of time, get some, grab some resources which might help them have a team member there to help them engage. Um, and that's actually true for the adult venues as well. When someone gets to 18, um, they would kind of transition to our access venue. Again, we have a, a separate access venue, but we also have inclusion spaces within all of our adult mainstream venues. Very wordy. Um, but yeah, so the idea being that we really want to see inclusion. We think that, you know, everyone should be able to be engaged and involved in what is going on within the mainstream venues also recognize that sometimes that is just too much for people um, and you know some of those venues are big they're loud there's a lot going on a lot of people some people just actually would prefer to come and watch a live stream in access or just um, appreciate maybe a bit more tailored kind of teaching and worship which is um, maybe a bit quieter not always might be a bit quieter <laughs> um, and, and tailored teaching which is kind of really at their level so again level of the you know individuals that come through our access for example is, is so varied um but we really try our best to kind of tailor it as, as much as we can for each, each individual needs um and then we have the breathe venue which is for parents and carers of children and young people and adults with additional needs and that is um amazing venue run by a great team uh, all who have experience of caring for people with additional needs and it's just really a safe kind of community on site at United and um, there's always cake there's karaoke there's curry nights there's prayer there's tea and coffee all of the really good stuff um, and there's also a chance to connect and uh, listen to kind of seminars and journey together throughout the week and I think a lot of parents would say that week is one of their best weeks of the year because they can just come and leave their young people in safe hands and um, yeah and just kind of like reflect on that shared experience together. I think I'm not a parent of someone with additional needs, but my siblings have additional needs and I work with lots of families over the years. And, you know, being a parent is tough and um, being a parent of someone with additional needs um, is, is really tough. And I think coming together in that space where there's a shared connection, um, but you're also able to be open and honest and just get some prayer and support about things makes a really amazing place to be yeah yeah fantastic and I and I bet as I say you know some of the people who are listening to this I guess will have known that maybe they've they've worked in those teams or been involved with them but but for some people even those who have attended United probably some of what you've just said has been news to them and maybe they've even gone oh that's what that gazebo was for in the corner we never knew what that was for um so it's fantastic to hear that and I I love how kind of holistic that whole ideas of, of what you're you're doing there you know because it's it's so comprehensive isn't it you know not to 18s we're saying you know we've got something here for you we can support you we can help you here are all of the ways in which we can do that but actually you're over 18 great you know we can still uh, support you um we're here to kind of help you and i and i you know i remember sort of um as as the ministry was kind of growing and it began to kind of branch into that area it feeling like a big step in some ways, but actually, of course, making complete sense because it's not as if suddenly someone gets to 18 and they're like, oh, now I can just slot into the adult venues like that. Partly that support might still be needed, as you say, for all sorts of reasons. But actually, even if they can perfectly well access the adult venue um, in terms of you know the sensory uh, load and what have you, actually what do we do as adults when we attend a venue we go with our friends we don't you know I'm 43 I don't go and sit with my mum and dad you know in the thing I want to go and hang out with my friends and whether you're 20 or 50 or 70 that uh, access offers that opportunity to people doesn't it to be with their peer group um, and to be independent which is just fantastic and then again as you say breathe um uh, again the, the way that that's grown is wonderful I was telling you the other day when we when we spoke ahead of this call that when we were in Newark although we had all of those aspects to it we just had one enormous venue rather than separate venues um and um so the parent area was really just a few tables by the kitchen although of course there was lots of cake even then 
And the thing that I used to be told every day by pretty much every single parent that came was this is the only time we can do this. You know, this is the only time we can just leave this child, this, this young person and, and know that they're gonna be okay because we know that this place is set up for them. We know that you guys understand um, and we, we can go and worship ourselves and know that it's all going to be fine. Um, and what a total gift that is. And, you know, with regard to the, the stuff for kids and youth as well, I think it's fantastic that you've got both of those options available, because I think for some people, what they'd expect is, oh, we're, well, we're all about inclusion. We're all about making sure that children can be supported in their age groups. And um, that's really important because it works for lots of them. Um, but it isn't the only thing. Or as some people might think, well, what you do is you have a venue where people can go instead of going to the regular venue. And that's also really important because it works for some, but it isn't the only thing. And the fact that both of those are on offer, you know, is just fantastic, isn't it? Um, because some children or young people will always go to one or always the other, but, you know, it might just depend on the day, mightn't it? And the flexibility of that, I think, is really important. So... Um, if people are now getting a bit more of a sense of what that looks like from what you've said, um, could you tell us maybe a little bit about what, just what it might look like on the ground? Like even, you know, within a sort of session, perhaps, what, what kind of stuff might be happening there? Because obviously, like any of us in any group, the range of different people that you're working with is huge. Um, their interests, their needs, their backgrounds, they're all so different. So. Give us a little insight into yeah i think this is um so i led access for three years before i took on the head of ministry role and um so that's our over 18 provision and that was i was mainly based in the access venue so i've got quite a good grasp of what goes on in there um at least in the weeks i run it um i think reflecting on this this year united breaks out we did zoom calls um, which were great and it was really great to see some of our delegates on there some new people some people we already knew some people which will hopefully be joining us next year because they've gone up from our place to access um the difference was that the one kind of tricky part was that although we did breakout rooms when we were all in kind of the main zoom room doing the teaching talky bit it, it was hard to gauge kind of who was getting what and, and someone might be chatting in the background and you don't really want to put them on mute because that feels a bit mean but also you know no, no one else can then hear what's going on and um I think that was the thing that I thought oh that's what I just love about access so much is that you know we we might give like a five ten minute feel or whatever it is teaching story from the front actually then we give opportunities for people just to go into groups and find a team member and have a chat and and that's what I love so much about the team is that they are always there to just break it down exactly to the level I, that person needs so you might have somebody you know a group having a really kind of illogical discussion or their time in one corner which you know is really full of conversation and words that I don't understand but then in the other corner you might have somebody who's you know nonverbal or you know unable to communicate in a way which might seem like you know we might expect them to. Um, they might be saying that our men's by popping bubbles or by jumping up and down on a trampoline or um, just drawing their prayer requests and and you know and that's amazing and that's something we just love to see. So um, yeah, in terms of that, I think that's the brilliant thing about it is that we can tailor it as much as we can um, with the you know the manpower that we have. But um, yeah, particularly even in worship, you know, again, there's no. There's no kind of right or wrong when it comes to worship. You've got people who would just much rather sit at the back and, and sit on the sofa or the swing and just, you know, be calm and, and not get involved. But you've got people who are up and down jumping. You know, we get the flags out. I'm never quite sure how people react to flags, but so far <laughs> each year we brought them to access. They've gone down a tree and um, yeah, it, it's, it's often full of movement and colour and um, and the delegates getting involved with helping to lead worship as well. I was looking back through a few photos of um, they're just guys get, bringing their guitars along and just really getting stuck in to being involved. And, and that takes away the kind of us and them aspect. It's like, actually, you know, we're a community here for this week at United and, and that's how it's going to be. So, yeah, I mean, it's, it's pretty noisy some days. It's pretty messy. You might wander in and think, what the flip is going on in here? But do you know what? It's brilliant. 
love it like and I really miss it <laughs> you know doing the zooms was great to see people but I was like oh I just really miss I miss that so much yeah, yeah. apart from that you know we'll, you might do some arts and crafts and drama and yeah. stuff but you know <laughs> yeah no I, it sounds amazing and it's making me yeah it's making me miss it too don't tell anyone but our place is my favorite you know <laughs> everything to do with accessible church is my favorite place on site but I never said that out loud um uh yeah no that really rings sort of bells from you know back in the day when I was um leading our place for um for that time um and and just as you say that sort of just so many different things kind of all going on you know at the same time um, and everybody kind of supporting everybody else you know it was so lovely when um, you know, you might see a child who uh, perhaps had struggled to engage um, and then gradually as the week went on, were, were joining in or, um, you know, a child who had seemed a bit sort of grumpy and maybe even a bit aggressive and then another child got upset and then this child is comforting them and you were like, oh gosh, I thought you were really grumpy and in a mood, but somehow you've reached out to this other child and, and comforted them and supported them and um, just everybody engaging at, at, at kind of their their different level we, we quite often um with the children would use um parachutes for the mm -hmm. stories and that kind of color and um yeah just a whole lot of fun and bubbles always bubbles so many bubbles <laughs> which are delightful and glorious but sticky forever i know i've got so many in my cupboard i've got like a whole cupboard of stuff that just comes out every year <laughs> bubbles and then glitter and suddenly you're just like you can't move you're covered in everything I used to drive a big van every year and um, it was always entirely full. Um, so that's that's lots of kind of stuff about what it looks like at, at United to give us a real kind of flavour of that. And I mean, I guess I was going to say, you know, what what difference does that make? But I, I mean, it's almost a daft question because it makes makes an extraordinary difference, doesn't it? Not just, you know, to, to parents, to carers, to the to the delegates themselves, to the team. Yeah, definitely. I think um, uh, I was thinking earlier about things I could share. And um, yeah, I know there's there's one delegate who I'm quite good friends with and he has Down syndrome and he comes most years. Uh, he has anyway for the last few years and he's always served on team and he just loves it. And he just he comes back and it's all he talks about is on oh, the tear fun cafe and he wears a tear fun T-shirt. It's got a tear fun water bottle. And I think some, you know, everyone, people might think, oh, like good for him, but actually that's like made a massive difference to his self-esteem and um, his confidence in being able to do new things. So it's great. Um, I was also thinking about team who come kind of support the access guys. And I've got a friend who I kind of dragged on team a few years ago and I should do, you know, <laughs> and um, I'm sure she won't mind me saying, but I, I live with her for like three years and I never once saw her cry. And she's you know nothing wrong with that she's just one of those people she doesn't cry much and um she came on team and I think it was about halfway through the week and she came back after one of the main meetings and she'd been supporting um some of the guys in I think it was the arena I'm not sure but she came back and she was just in floods of tears and she was just like Jess I've just seen God do this amazing thing in in one of these these guys that we're supporting and it was just really amazing and I just I just don't and I was like wow like this is this is having big impacts on team let alone you know, the delegates that they're supporting and I don't know I just think it's amazing what, what God does on during those weeks because yeah we're there to support delegates but actually everyone gets something out of it so yeah I, I used to cry constantly <laughs> <laughs> like like literally just never stop because it felt like you were just always seeing something incredible you know some answer to prayer or some child engage in a way that they hadn't engaged before or some you know a parent in tears because they'd been able to mm. um have some time to themselves like I just never stopped crying like in I mean in a, in a lovely way in a good way but but just sort of never stopped and actually the interesting thing you mentioned something there that that is another thing that people might not have realized which is actually that you know some of our delegates who themselves have disabilities or additional needs working on team and people might think well they're supported maybe to access the sessions but not realize that it that we actually do have quite a few people who themselves serve on team which is fantastic isn't it mm. yeah it's really yeah. good and um so I, I was thinking as well about um I don't know if there's any other stories you want to share but I I've been thinking through and um I had a lovely half an hour earlier actually reading through the the document that I still have from years ago of, of different um testimonies 
and there are pages and pages of them actually and some of them have kind of lodged in my mind but some of them I'd forgotten so it was total joy to read back over them um, and just a few little stories for me that um, that made such a difference one of them was from just a couple of years ago when I went into the first venue one evening to speak um, and saw as a delegate one of the young people that I had known when he was a little boy and just to see him completely kind of at home in in first and being supported in a age appropriate way now aged 16 17 I guess um when I'd known him age six um and uh, that was just delightful I got I got really teary then actually I was just about to go on stage and speak in the first and I was really teary watching him um kind of move around which is lovely and I think some of my favorite stories from actually that time in our place are of those moments of inclusion where um, the group, whatever age group it is, totally um, welcomed and loved uh, the young person that mm. was being supported and just those really lovely moments. And so two of them kind of came to mind. They happen both to be in the youth venue, but there are similar stories across every age group. Um, and one of them was a young woman who just loved music and loved to dance and loved to, um, she didn't, um, have very many words um, and so her singing was was mostly sort of making noise but she loved to make noise and to make music and to dance and the band in first invited her to rehearse with them a couple of times and then towards the end of the week they invited her onto the stage in during the worship time to be part of the band and she was so excited and all the young people were cheering her on and, and just worshipping um, with her taking that part which was glorious and then the other one I'm going to read to make sure I don't get it wrong but um this was in club one and so they'd been doing cardboard testimonies and four of the young people um that were being supported um from our team uh, wanted to join in and do their cardboard testimonies um and one of them wrote on her testimony that God had given her the confidence to sing one wrote that he'd been filled with the spirit one way wrote that he was feeling much more loved and happier at the end of the week and then the fourth one, uh, nobody could read what it said on his cardboard testimony, but his face was in a great big grin. And so, oh, no. um, yeah. So good. Lovely. Yeah. I was uh, reminiscing the other day, we were talking in a conversation about uh, Justin Welby, the Archbishop of Canterbury. And I was like, oh, I met him. He came to New Wine a few years ago to United. And they were like, oh, really? Yeah, what did, what did you talk to him? What did, and I was like, well, I had to interview him in front of a group of adults with additional needs so I got to find out his favourite dinner and the name of his pets but not much else and then we did have some really serious conversations after that but yeah I'm pretty sure he still, still speaks of that evening as a highlight as well yeah I bet he loved it so that's that's United and um, that's what uh, accessible church ministry looks like there when we gather together in the summer but what about the rest of the year what does it look like at you know as we call it the other 50 weeks mm. yeah so um uh, well like I said part of my role is just training and encouraging churches so um because I started my role not long before the pandemic I haven't done as much of that as I'd like I've done a bit on zoom and just kind of email stuff but I did my first in person in the building training day the other week which was very nice um go and just actually you know chat to people and um yeah just get to know them and see where their heart is and they were really welcoming and lovely so that's something that uh, I'm happy to do if people would like to chat to me about that kind of thing then they are more than welcome to send me an email um or even if it's just a chat over zoom or over the phone I promise to have all the answers but again like I said I'd love to encourage you and stuff and um yeah kind of even signpost you to other things if that's helpful um that's fantastic Jess sorry just to interrupt you for a sec because yeah. I because I guess people might not have realized that that's the thing that they can do and so that's the case isn't it whether you know because they might say well we currently don't have anybody in our church you know with disability but um we just like to know about it you know that's fine isn't it or they might say well we you know we want to expand that ministry or you know we've got some kids in our church that need extra support but we're not sure what to do so like in all of those cases they could get in touch with you couldn't they yeah definitely um and i'm i'll say my email but i'm sure it's around somewhere on uh, the website but it's s thompson at new hyphen wine.org so 
yeah, there you go. Fantastic. Um, or yeah, find you find you on the website. Um, yeah, or, or drop you an email. Yeah, I'm around somewhere. Um, and then yeah, I spend um time as well like organizing team for United. That's always a fun thing. So if you're watching this and you think this sounds interesting, I'd love to know more. Um, and spend a week in the summer getting to know some really great people. Then feel free to sign up to be on one of our teams. We're always looking for people to support our children, adults, and young people on site at United. Um, and even as well, just to kind of, you know, if this is something you're interested in and you want to know more, again, just email me. I'm always looking for people to connect with and network with. Um, and just so I can kind of know like what's going on across the New Wine churches. That's uh, that's something that is yeah just always really helpful and encouraging to know about. So. And Jess, people might think if they're interested in team, they might think, well, it sounds great, but I've got no experience of this at all. I've never worked with children or young people. I've, I don't know much about disability, but um, can they still be on team? Yes, definitely. Um, we just love a serving heart. That's, you know, that's all it takes. We have some amazing team leaders um, who are really kind of experienced and have led for years. So um, they're really good at like, you know, taking them under their wing. And we, give, we go have, normally have a training day before the summer. So you'd get to meet some of the team and team leaders and um, kind of get to hear a bit more about what would your role would be, I suppose. Um, yeah, I mean, you know, we're just we're serving people in the same way you'd be welcoming people to the arena or serving them on the catering team. You know, we're just all there to serve and to show God's heart for people. So, yeah, get involved. Fantastic. So, um so team, so supporting churches, but then there are also um, other events. Oh yes. <laughs> um, yeah, so big we prompt, are- Big prompt, big plug, come on. <laughs> Sorry, it would click eventually. I did write it down. Um, we are hoping to host our Accessible Church Day, um, one day conference next April. We're just still waiting for confirmation of a date and venue, but it's in the pipeline, it's coming. We're very excited um and that will be somewhere in the north which i know is a big region um it will be up there somewhere and yes um this is a chance again to connect and network with other people um i keep saying it but i find it i always find it really encouraging to meet other people who are like-minded and who share the same passion and vision for me um and through these accessible church days is where i kind of started realizing there were other people like me who had this vision so um, yeah, they're really good to come along and um, meet some great people and yeah, just kind of learn and journey together with this. Fantastic. So again, anybody can come to that, can't they? Whether they're currently working in this, interested, parents, you know, whoever they might be, just um, just come along and um, that'll be a fantastic time to, to learn and to grow and to meet each other and support each other and um, all of those good things and, and we'll advertise that obviously as soon as that venue and that date is tied down and um, then it will be it will be mentioned all over social media we won't let you escape from uh, from knowing when that's going to be so um so that's fantastic so we've talked loads about accessible church and the ministry in general we've talked about what it looks like in united we've talked about it what it looks like through the other um 50 weeks and it's been a fantastic kind of introduction for people um who might have wanted to know a little bit more and might not have known very much about it but there is actually an even better way that they can find out um lots more about it isn't there because you've actually put together a bit of a series so could you um give us a little bit of a taster as to what that's all about yeah, so this, the, uh, the introduction and the first session for the Accessible Church Toolkit dropped today on New Wine Online, um, which is very exciting. Um, and although the introduction and the first session is me, don't worry, it's not all me. There are some other really great people in there as well. Um, I just happened to do the first one. Um, so, yeah, so it's uh, a series, I think it's seven episodes, seven yeah, episodes, I'm going to say. Um, and they're all covering different kind of topics. So uh, we start off with the first one, which is just a general kind of ex how accessible church practically. How can you do things in your church to make it a bit more accessible for people with additional needs and disabilities? Um, and then we, there is a bit more kind of um, theological discussion in there as well. Um, a couple of friends, I was actually re-watching it back a bit earlier, uh, John Norday and Hayden Spensley, who are great friends, of uh, New Wine Network and they um, 
for, they're both full-time wheelchair users and church leaders and they talk about uh, language and the language we use in around disability in church um which is all one of those things actually I think sometimes we a bit in a fluster about we might trip over our words because we're not quite sure what to say what's the wrong thing what's the right thing um as you know we know with language it's always changing and when you know but um so that's a really great conversation and they're both full of wisdom and grace around many things um and one has also got another session around healing in the church and how we kind of approach that um from kind of a viewpoint of disability which is great and um our friend louise is gonna is doing a session on welcoming children with additional needs in church and there's some thoughts on prayer and worship in there as well so um yeah hopefully a really kind of insightful um check in on over the next few weeks um ideally you can do them you know as they come up week by week if there's something you really just want to dip into then you can do that but um or you can do them as a group or you can do them on your own however whatever meets your needs really you know <laughs> fantastic that sounds amazing um so yes yeah, so are they, are they going to come out week kind of week by week yeah yeah so yeah, that, that's fantastic, isn't it? So people can kind of just decide. It's a bit like you know a Netflix series, isn't it? You can do the whole lot in one go. You can do it. You can you can do the old fashioned way of watching telly and wait for the next week when it comes out. Um, binge in one day, whatever you feel like. Um, and I th what a fantastic range of topics because I think those are the things that often people ha do have really big questions about, don't they? And so, kind of the thing is in this area, we we all want to do it don't we it's not as if anybody doesn't want to be welcoming or, or, or doesn't want to be accessible but I think people often think oh I don't I don't know what to do because I don't want to get it wrong um and of course not everybody's needs are the same there's a vast range of what would help different people which brings us back to what you said at the beginning um which is actually the best thing you can do is to ask but of course there's also disabilities and additional needs that that aren't visible so you might not be able to ask because you might not know that somebody has that um, need you know which is is one of those things where people sometimes say oh well we don't do any of this because we don't have anybody in our church mm. that's disabled well a that's probably not true and b you wouldn't know <laughs> um so that's fantastic isn't it and i think talking about all of those things you know talking about language is so important because yes it does change and um but actually we it's on us isn't it to be using the right sort of language not to be using terms that are offensive and outdated and and just not appropriate and so we need to kind of understand all of that and so that'll be really helpful uh, the healing question is is a big question isn't it that often comes up in this kind of area what does you know particularly for us in new wine and and what we believe about about prayer and about ministry and about healing this whole subject around disability is a big one isn't it so fantastic to be able to have that conversation Mm, yeah, definitely really grateful to John and Hayden for this conversation particularly. I mean, I respect that some people probably look at me and think, oh, you haven't got a disability, what have you got to say about it? Which is why I really was really keen to involve people um, who, you know, I, I really respect and have those kind of honest conversations because I think otherwise sometimes it, it might get like shouty about on social media or, um, you know, you kind of only hear about it when it goes wrong, but it's, you know, Hopefully there's grace in that and um and John and Hayden are just really good at being graceful and, and they say yeah this happened and this went wrong and this wasn't great but actually then this happened or you know then I could see it from this point and yeah kind of spoiler alert on the language one like I don't think many people go out to necessarily offend people um like you said you know we all want to be welcoming and, and use good language but yeah it just comes from our heart doesn't it and our attitude of, of what we're trying to say and again speaking to people individually and asking you know what kind of language they prefer to be used around their kind of disability or or whatever it is really because it you know as we know these things that it's more than disability in the language we use but um that's what we're kind of focusing on here I suppose yeah yeah absolutely I think it's just really important to have thought about it isn't it because at the end of the day you you, you can't necessarily sort of always get it right because actually you might have five disabled people in front of you and one of them might say I prefer this language to be used one of them might say I prefer that language to be used so it, it's not as if oh well I'll just watch this 
um, session and then I'll be able to get it right and it'll all be okay. Um, but to have thought about it, to be careful with how we speak or always to be thinking, you know, particularly, I guess, for those of us who are up front, maybe leading things, hosting things, doing those kind of introductions, those notices, those of us who preach, you know, really to be aware um, of, of, of how we are including or excluding people. Um, and how we are praying what sort of things we're we're saying and expecting mm -hmm. and that leads into like the other session you talked about welcome and um again just what does that look like i remember talking to a parent um years ago who came and brought their child to our place and we were just chatting and she was really emotional because as i said before she was saying gosh you know it's so rare that i can leave my child anywhere and and go and, and just know that they're safe and and I can kind of worship. And, and I said, oh, what's church like for you? And she just burst into tears and she said, we don't go to church at the moment because mm -hmm. our church asked us to leave, essentially, because they said we just, I mean, they didn't quite say you may not come here again, but what they said was we can't cope with you, um, mm -hmm. you know, which is it sort of in her mind amounted to the same thing. They said, well, we can't support your child in our kids' church because we don't have the resource. Um, you know, and, and if they stay with you in church, they can't really cope and it's noisy and it's difficult. And so she said, well, we just don't go to church because um, it's, it's not possible. And that's just a huge tragedy. Mm. Um, and so to think through all that complicated stuff about welcome um, and the stuff that we might have to change our minds on or change our practice on in order to facilitate that. Yeah, definitely. I think there was there's definitely things I've had to kind of rethink, even kind of growing up with siblings and kind of surrounded by children and young people who have additional needs and adults, actually. Um, yeah, and I've kind of backtracked and now probably I might not use the same language that I did or I might not have the same kind of theology around stuff that I did. And I think, again, it's just listening to the people in your church and your communities who, who are disabled and um, yeah, and what they have to say about stuff and then what they think about stuff, because there's no point me saying you should do this when actually everyone who is actually experiencing this is saying, no, do this. It's something completely different. So, yeah, just listening and, and acting on what we've heard, I think, is really important. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I think for me, you know, as, as a church leader, these are things that um, we have to be thinking about, talking about, putting putting into practice. And we, and we have to kind of we have to mean it and, and we have to be willing to, to make those changes we happen at the moment in our church to have um a, a few a, a number of um autistic children and thinking through what it act, i mean they're all different they're different ages they've got different needs but but thinking through how they can be supported in the kids group and what we might need to change or put into practice and and it's it's on us you know it's not on them to adapt <laughs> it's on us to say mm. well how can we make this work for you um yeah Oh, go on. Go on. No, I was just going to say, and, and having and being prepared, I suppose, for um, you can't always be prepared for everything, but by having a few things in place, you can be prepared for when someone turns up. I had a conversation a few weeks back with someone who said, oh, I was telling him about my job, my role here. And he said, oh, I wish I knew you existed because we had someone come along to some the course we were running and he was in a wheelchair and we didn't we didn't have a clue really and you know and we kind of muddled our way through and she was able to give us feedback in the end and say how we could do it better next time but if we'd have known what we could do better before she came we would have saved ourselves a lot of embarrassment and a lot of trouble so and you can't everything but you can certainly do some things yeah yeah absolutely and I, exactly as you're, you're saying I think it's about just having sort of thought thought it through isn't it like our it happens that our building here our, we have um it's quite a, an old church building it's 171 years old um so some bits of it are not that accessible but it, we're fortunate in that the entrance kind of is accessible you can get easily into the body of the church it happens that on saturday i'm doing a wedding where the the bride's father is in a wheelchair and and we that's we can manage that because we have chairs and we can move things last weekend i did a baptism where one of the godparents was a wheelchair chair user and we happen to have a portable font and normally we have it up some steps on a bit of a platform so everyone can see but fortunately it was really easy just to bring it down onto the level now if you had a old 171 year old font that you couldn't move you wouldn't be able to do that we happen to use a portable one but I think if you've thought that stuff through it becomes easier in the moment doesn't it rather mm -hmm. than suddenly going oh my gosh 
what do we do? And then it becomes like a thing that the person feels awkward about. Yeah, definitely a bit more of an afterthought, but. Yeah. So if um, if somebody's watching this right now and they're thinking, oh gosh, you know, I, I think in our church, we probably need to do some thinking about this or, um, you know, maybe there's stuff that, that we're not quite getting right. Obviously they can contact you. They can ask you to um, have a conversation with them. Is there, are there other things they can do? Is there anything they could read or is there something that they could just back, begin to, to think through to type, take the first step? Yeah, so definitely get involved with the series as it comes out week by week. And um, after each episode as well, there's just a few questions, nothing like, you know, you don't have to write an essay, but just some things to think about perhaps after you've watched to see, think about like, oh, what does that mean to me? And what could I change or, you know, think about for next time? Um, so that's a great place to start. Um, there is this amazing book, which was written by my predecessor, Naomi Graham, who kind of, um, after Heather Holgate kind of really spearheaded these ministries and put a lot of time and effort and energy into kind of growing it into the ministry that it is now. Um, and she wrote a book which is called uh, Love Surpassing Knowledge. I'll hold it up. I don't know if you can see it very well. You can buy it from St Andrew's Bookshop. And um, it's just all about inclusion and church. And Naomi is an occupational therapist. So she thinks and writes a lot about sensory processing and how we can um, use our bodies to, to worship and pray and engage with what's going on. And um, she kind of writes from that viewpoint. She is just really good. There's some really good helpful examples in there of sources you could use or get um, and some stories. And it, it's the book I read quite a lot, to be honest, because. Uh, yeah, Naomi's just really great and, and a good friend too. So um, that's definitely something you can buy, love surpassing knowledge. Um, but yeah, I think, um, yeah, I think we can just all start with a good welcome. I think that's, if we're gonna change anything about what we do, it's to provide a really good welcome. I think even if that starts with having a welcoming website, which people can access and it's clear about like, you know what the church looks like and who you might see when you arrive and um just to kind of get rid of like the anxiety of going somewhere new for a lot of people that's quite a big thing um and then just someone friendly welcoming and who is able to kind of at least try and assist you with any accessibility needs you have when you arrive is, is a really good place to start Fantastic. Thank you. Yeah, one, one of the things that we've done at our church is we, ha we have an access kind of statement that we put on our website and like in our church porch, which kind of just describes some of the things that might help different people. So, you know, it says on our website that access into the church and around the grounds of the church is, is, is accessible to wheelchairs. And it says that we have large print available of the service sheets and the books. And it's, you know, it, and it kind of lists the different things that are and aren't available we don't regularly have bsl interpreter but you know if somebody approaches us we will arrange what you know it, it kind of tells you what, what is and isn't available and i think that can be quite a good thing to do on it so yeah, yeah. definitely that's great and I, I, I as you're talking about this series which i can't wait to watch um I, i'm just thinking that it might be a great thing for people to to do as a group either just an existing small group or even a, a group of people who get together and say well we're all passionate about this um, you know, one person might think, gosh, I'd love to do this. And I'll just approach, you know, a couple of others. Um, and they, they watch the series together. They reflect on all those questions that you've talked about. And then that kind of, that becomes, that becomes a group, doesn't it? That becomes a group of people that then are passionate about putting into practice. Maybe they then come to the conference together and, um, you know, invite you to come and speak. It, it, it kind of becomes a group that can champion this content. Yeah, definitely. When I did the training day a few weeks ago, it was really lovely because the church invited me to speak, but then it also invited neighbouring churches to come and get involved as well because they recognised it was something that it wasn't just for their church, it was, you know, for all of the churches in the community. So it was someone from like each denomination there, which was great. And yeah, like you said, you find someone with a similar vision and a similar passion and it, it starts to get exciting about what you can do in your church. So yeah, it's great. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, this is, it's just so much the heart of God, isn't it? Mm. Um, yeah, definitely. I think we see that time and time again. And, you know, sometimes when I'm sat in those venues, I think, oh, I wonder if this is what heaven will be like, because it's just, it's such a mix and it's such a variety and it doesn't really matter if it sounds good or not. Like, you know, I mean, sitting on some of these Zoom calls, not, you know, it breaks out ones, but some other groups that I support and someone's playing guitar and everyone's singing out of tune and all over the place. And 
you know, no offense to them, they're great guys, but we can't really hold a tune between us. <laughs> Excuse me. And my housemate's like, what earth is that? What is going on? I'm like, but this is what heaven's gonna sound like. It's just beautiful because it's our worship. And it doesn't matter if we don't sing in tune or if we don't play the right chords on the guitar, you know, heaven is just gonna be a brilliant place where we can just worship in whichever way we need to and whichever way helps us meet with God. And, you know, if we can do any of that through what we do, you know, at New Wine and with you know, um, accessible church ministry, then I'm, I'm there. I'm happy to be a part of that because, you know. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I know I've, I've long, because of my own singing ability or lack thereof, I've long believed in the sort of truth of the fact that whatever noise I make is a joyful noise to the Lord. Um, so, um, yeah, no, I think you're right. I think you're right. And we, we, we definitely learn a lot about joy, don't we, from what those kind of gatherings look like. Mm. Oh, fantastic. Oh, thanks so much, Jess. So uh, we're coming to the end of our time already. Um, uh, and it feels like we've we've talked about lots of different things. Is there anything else that we should have said that we forgot to say that you want to share with people before we, we close? I'm going to pray when we finish. But No, I think we've covered it all, you know looking through my notes to see what I wrote down but I think um yeah I mean like I said go and check out the series that's what we're here to promote but we've just been having a nice chat so that's quite nice <laughs> um yeah and again like I said feel free to get in touch and sign up the team and all of those great things and it would just be lovely to hear from anyone and, and be in touch with people so yeah that's it. fantastic we really have I mean this is both this is our passion isn't it we really just have had a lovely chat that you know it happens that we've let other people join us on um, and I hope they've really enjoyed the chat as much as we have um so do folks if you're listening to this whenever you're listening to it do um get in touch with Jess if that would be helpful to you she's a fount of of knowledge in in um in this area and we'll be able to encourage you and equip you and help you um in um in doing this stuff really well in your local church and she'd love to hear from you and uh, do check out this series because it's just going to be absolute gold. So I would just love to pray um, as we finish. I'd love to pray for you, Jess, and the team and all that you do um, and, uh, and for this whole area of ministry. So let's pray. Loving God, I thank you um, so much for your great love for all of your children. And I pray for each one of us for us as individuals and for our churches, that they would be places of welcome, um, places that are accessible, places where everybody can find their home and feel safe and loved and equipped and can grow in their faith and can meet you. And I pray for uh, the whole Accessible Church ministry. Thank you so much for Jess and for all those who've um, been part of that uh, ministry before her um, and are part of it now on team in all sorts of different ways. Um, thank you for uh, the ministry that takes place at United, for our place and Access and Breathe. Thank you for all that happens through the year and um, for the conference, um, for all the different training sessions and equipping that happens. And I pray, God, for every single um, person and church that is represented um, listening to this, that you would help us to um, know how to share your heart of love and welcome in all that we do. And for every single um, delegate that um, this ministry um, has supported in the past or will support in the future, um, we pray your blessing on them today on their children and their young people and the adults and their families. And we thank you for them. And we pray um, that this ministry would continue to be a source of support and strength to them. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Thanks so much, Jess. What a joy to spend this time with you. And thanks everybody for being here and for listening. <laughs>